Hi everybody, this is Karis and today is Thursday, July the 5th. Um, let's see, this video has got to be really quick because I am about to go to the airport and get on a plane to go to New Orleans for the weekend, so I'm going to try to record it, edit it, get it up on YouTube for you guys like while I'm on my layover or something. I don't really know how it's going to work, so you might not see this till tomorrow. Um, but anyway, what I want to talk to you about just really briefly is the connection between angels and aliens. Um, I did a video on them in the very beginning of doing the series of vlogs, and there's been a lot of questions about um, the things I said back then, and I want to specify and say that the angels that I was talking about during that initial video were the biblical angels, like the ones mentioned in the Bible, and those are often, I don't know if it's the majority of the time, but I think that it might be, um, they weren't the angels that we think of angels as today. Um, they were actually ETs that people called angels. So that's that. And so now what I want to talk about is, and that should explain the questions a lot of people have about that initial video. Because what I was mostly talking about were, the, and for instance in different um, cultures where they've seen like angels come down in heavily chariots and ships and things like that. Those are obviously extraterrestrials, not angels. Although some types of extraterrestrials seem to give off a glow. Some types um, do the different things that are characteristic of angels historically. But they weren't actually angels. And there's definitely a difference between angels and the extraterrestrials that we usually call, you know, ETs or aliens. And the difference is in their evolutionary paths and in their purposes. Um, angels are technically ETs. They are technically not from Earth. They didn't evolve on Earth the way that we do, but they're also not the same as like a Grey or a Pleiadian. Um, so here's the difference, because my friend Kimberly Cochran, who I've done some collaborations with, um, she m majorly talks angels. Like it's her, it's her field, although she also communicates with other beings. Um, and I, for instance, do speak to the angelic realm sometimes uh, in my meditation. That's something I do every day, although the majority of it is speaking to my guides, most of whom, most of whom are ETs. So anyway, they do have a different jingle. Like, they, they sound different. They are different. And so we were asking, Kim and I, what is the difference? What is going on? What are you guys? And one day I was, like, washing my dishes, of course, because that's when a lot of downloads come. Dishes and shower, and I think it's because you're in water. Anyway, um... So the difference is this, angels, now there are a bunch of different class of angels, kind of like you can say tree, and there's not just one type of tree, there are a bunch of types of tree, but a tree is also a tree. And so I'm just going to talk about angels generally at this point, and then I'll tell you some um, deviations from the norm in a second. But essentially, angels, the ones who were mostly bonded with earth, were brought in, some of them were created with the creation of earth, some of them weren't, but they were brought in. And their job is to steward the earth specifically and the things going on on the earth specifically and very heavily human evolution because we're so enmeshed with the fate of the planet as a whole specifically. So they can appear as a bunch of different things and that's also how they can um, work with matter and energy the way that it is on the earth plane so easily. That's why when you request something from angels a lot of times they'll get you right there and they'll fix stuff and it'll just work out instantly. And it's because they're so well versed in the way that the earth works and they helped to create it and they help to now shape it and do stuff with it. Um, and the angel's evolutionary path is how much energy they can channel through in service. So that's why you have like guardian angels that stay with one person or guide angels. And then you have like angels of an area and then greater, greater number. And then you have like the archangels. And it's because their evolutionary path, kind of like with anything that you're used to, first you have this little task, then you have a larger task and a larger task. And so the archangels have learned to channel lots and lots and lots of energy. And so like thousands and thousands of people all over the earth can be calling on Archangel Michael at one time and he can handle it and he can be helping all of them. Whereas, you know, the guardian angels or, you know, some of the more specified angels maybe can't handle that amount of like bandwidth at once. So that's kind of how the angels work. And the ETs, now I'm talking about benevolent, happy, you know, wanting to help with human ascension ETs, are more like missionaries because they had their own evolution on their own planet. And I'd also like to say that there are exceptions to this because some ETs are more closely related to light beings and like some of them never had physical form the way we think about it. But right now I'm talking about the benevolent greys, 
the Pleiadians, um, Andromedans, you know, even some reptilians are benevolent, those type, those type ETs that are, you know, generally human form, um, but they're interdimensional. So anyway, they're more like uh, missionaries, and so it's part of their evolutionary path to help the humans, and if they can succeed in this, not only will they have kind of checked something off their developmental list, the way that it is for all you light workers when you kind of have someone that you're supposed to help around you, or a situation that you're supposed to go into and represent this energy that's needed in the situation in order for you to kind of beat your level, well, there is this to help us, and so not only is that part of it, but also once we ascend and become multidimensional enough to start being true, true creators, we have something pretty specific on Earth that I'm not even still sure what it is yet, but I know it has something to do with the heart energy, it has something to do with creation, and it has something to do with the fact that a bunch of different um, kingdoms of ET, of Davic realm, of lots of different stuff have combined in creating our makeup and our code. So there's something about that, but essentially once they succeed and once we succeed and we have um, kind of claimed our birthright as being the creative beings that we're supposed to be and that we're trying to evolve into, they're going to benefit too because they're going to be able to work with us and make greater and greater stuff. So as you can see, like that, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Agenda, you know? and the angelic agenda are kind of different, but they're related and it's easy to mistake one for the other. So um, I hope that that cleared it up for some of you guys. And this is all stuff that I've gotten intuitively. So if you ask me for references and stuff, I know that I'm not the only one saying a lot of this, but, um, but I can't point to a book where I got it because I got it through meditation and stuff. So you can do your own research and see if it corresponds or not. It's all my opinion, but it is things that I got not from my own brain, but um, from downloads and anyway. I hope you have a marvelous, what is today, Thursday weekend, and um, I will hopefully be posting once I get to New Orleans and tell you what it's like down there. I'm really looking forward to kind of getting into the energies and taking a feel and seeing what's happening down there right now. So go in peace, have a great day, and I will talk to you soon.